So, we're working on cars today. Man cave is getting posh. Ha <laughs> ha, let's go. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Right, we are doing a basic engine service on this 1967 MGB. Let's get on with it. Ugh. Right. Let's move you guys in a bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. I've already jacked the car up off camera and let the oil out. There's the oil in there. So she's got no oil in it. But we have a leaky rocker cover gasket. So we're going to be doing that. And doing plugs and doing the oil filter. Um, points condenser, absolutely fine. I've already checked them. So we're just going to do a really basic engine service. Also the air filters, they're good as well. So we're not replacing them. But everything else... What's going on? Let's get some stuff together. And just like magic, all our parts are here. Rocker gasket, plugs, oil filter, and some oil. So let's be getting some tools, and first thing we're going to do is get the plugs out of this thing and get them changed. So I'm going to do these plugs one at a time, just so I don't get the foreign order muddled up. You can just pull the leads all off all at once, but to be honest with you, that's just as easy to do it this way. And also, we can read on these spark plugs. This is a dying art, you see, a spark plug on an old car. That will tell you all you need to know about how she's running. Oh, now that, look at that plug. Let's get some focus on you. That spark plug, that's pretty good. It's a nice sandy color it's not black it's not sooted up if it was too white it would be running too hot so this engine is pretty much or on this cylinder she's pretty much running spot on learn to read your spark plugs guys instead of just taking them out and throwing them away look at them if they're that nice sandy color that's fine if they're sooted up she's running a bit rich if they're oily she could be a you know piston ring problem if she's too white, then that could be running too hot and she's too lean. That's telling me this engine's perfectly healthy on that cylinder. Ugh. So let's get our plug in here. Here's our new plug. Let's have a look at the new one. Yep, gapped. Let's buzz him in. And we're going to look at all the, um, we'll look at all the plugs on this engine as well. Make sure, just to make sure that all the plugs are good. Put our lead back on, one plug done. Now we'll just buzz around and look at the others. I may well forward through this part. Because once you've seen one plug change, you've seen them all change. But saying that, you guys don't mind the long video, I've noticed, so I shan't forward through. <sighs> ah, this plug, look. Look, 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 looky here. See how much darker this plug is? She's a little bit black. I mean, it's not massively bad, but it's not as... As compared to the other one, it's not quite as bright and as nice as the one on number one cylinder. So number two cylinder there is running a little bit rich. Just a skosh. Now am I going to worry? Gapped. Am I going to worry too much? Not particularly. 
you got to remember, this is a classic. This is 1967 technology. You know, when this thing was made, we were still using two-star petrol, for God's sake. So, if it was much more sooty, I'd be a bit concerned. But, it isn't that bad, if I'm honest. I've seen a heck of a lot worse. So, are we going to start adjusting the carbs? No, and I'll tell you for why, this car runs excellently. I haven't driven it, I've never driven an MGB. That's what we're going to do next, when I've done this. I said, I've never driven an MGB, but the guy assures me it runs fine. And I picked this up on a trailer to do this work. Yeah, this plug, pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. So... Them front two cylinders, or their middle two cylinders, sorry, so far, they're running equal. It might be number four or the same, and that this one's the odd one out. Gapped. We shan't know until we have a look. But I say, this runs so well, I'm not going to start putting a colour tune kit on the carb and all them business to try and uh, to try and get it a bit leaner on number one because thing with twin SUs is with twin carbs you have got such a job to get them so the plugs burn exactly the same you have got a heck of a job with that you know they're carburetors I mean that's not like where you can adjust each individual cylinder this is very crude where two carbs just supply four cylinders. So you can't say, well, the left carb do the front two and the right carb do the rear two cylinders. It don't work like that. They all go into one manifold. So worrying about why. Right. It looks like number one cylinder is the anomaly. All these plugs pretty match. But the good thing is. They've got no oil on them. If them plugs were a bit oily, that would be a bit more concerning. But the colour of them plugs, gapped, is absolutely fine. And if you wonder why I'm not going through these plugs with a feeler gauge, most of these plugs, they come pre-gapped from the factory at the manufacturer's recommended gap. Well, the manufacturer's recommended gap for their product is pretty good. So unless you physically look at them and you can see, hang on, that gap don't look right. Because yes, it could get changed if they're dropped or knocked in transit at any point. You might say, okay. But you could look at them and you can tell they're in factory tolerances. And once again, this isn't a space shell. We're not going to the moon. It's a 1967 MGB. Right, we're going to get this rocker cover off now. We've got a funny nut arrangement on there. Look, what's going on? <laughs> right, let's get the old spanner. That's coming off brilliant right we need to get this water hose out of the way is there a washer on there there is a washer on there place them on the wing that hose will then come off we need a bigger spanner for this one not sure oh, look at that now these nuts don't have to be very tight because it's a cork gasket. The worst thing you can do with cork gaskets is over tighten the damn things. Because you'll just squish them out the outside and then you'll have problems. hoping this rocker cover will come off without taking that breather off but if we have to take the breather off that's only a screw so all right we'll lift this water hose 
over the top here. Take these little spaces off so we don't drop them. Oh, there's still a nut on there, look. There is still a nut on there. There we go, she's coming loose, I can see it lifting at the back. Got that off. There we go. And here. Wow, look how clean that is under there. Look, look how clean that is. There is no foam, no emulsion. That is absolutely fine. That looks very good. But we do have an oil leak. Ah, looky, looky there. Looky, looky there. All right, let's get you around here a bit. Can you see? This rocker cover gasket, where it was leaking, that's bulged out just a tiny bit, look, that ain't level with the block. So this gasket has actually bulged a tiny bit. And I think that's where our leak was. Although the gasket itself looked good, I can't see any sort of major problems with the gasket. But it's squished here, look. See where it's... Can we get you... Zoom out a little, see if we can get you there. If you look, there's... Come on, get focus. It's like squished out here, look. Where the gasket has not been seating quite right. She's a bit too far out, and that's what was causing our oil leak. So, compare your new gasket to your old one. Before you start removing it. That looks fine. So now let's get this gasket open and get a new one on. Do you want to use any sealer on there? Not particularly. Some people put sort of gasket sealer around these cork rocker gaskets. But I think if you install them right, they're not going to leak. They're pretty good. So before we do that, let's get you back round here. We need to just give the old girl, with my cloth, just wipe all the oil off this mating surface and make sure there's no debris on there. Make sure there's no debris, no old bit of gasket, which there isn't. That actually looks clean as a whistle. There's a little bit of dust in this corner by the thermostat housing. I want to get off. There we go. That is pretty much clean. So we'll just plop our new gasket on. There we go. Make sure she's evened out. Alright, this is the problem with new gaskets. It's bulging in a bit, look, see? That gasket won't stay square where it needs to be. It's a little bit distorted. So we need to just try and open it up. Without giving it too much grief, because the last thing you want to do is break it. Perfect, look. See, you give it a little stretch. And now it's sitting perfect on the mating surface. So again, with our rocker cover, just give him a wipe all around the edge, check for damage. I'm amazed at how clean this is inside. Unbelievable. But now we have got no damage on this rocker cover. A good mating surface. I can tell by when I undone it, it hadn't been screwed down too tight. So, um, yeah. I think we're ready to go back on. You want to lower this down quite square. As to not interrupt your gasket. Make sure the gasket is all... Mm. 
make sure your gasket was all good. Right, that one's gone in. We want one of these little spacers on there. And then this one goes in. Oh, hang on. Hang on, then. Look what you're doing, mister. You didn't put the little breather pipe back. So we move our little breather back. Put him in. Now tighten these down quite gradually. I ain't got any tension on the rocker cover at the minute. Right, we're starting to get a bit of tension, so we want to do now this back one. Right, we're starting to get tension on that. So we'll nip them down half or quarter a turn at a time. But don't over tighten them. I reckon one more little scoosh. Get them nuts level. There we go. That is about right. So we want our little spacer under there. Our washer. And our half inch nut. And that basically is how you change the rocker cover gasket. The thing I love about old things, these are so lovely to work on. So that's done. Now we've got to get this oil filter out. And the oil filter... Yeah! As I, like I said, I've already let the oil out of this. So we ain't got to worry about the oil. That's already drained out. So when I lift this off, it should be relatively empty. Unless there's a successful one-way valve in there. So we just want to crack off this big nut on the top here. And give him a lift out. There we go. Now we want a rag to hand here, because that could be messy. Oh, we don't know. We'll get our rag down there. Give it a knock. And here is our filter. Take the little spring off the top. There we go. Right, on the top and bottom we've got a little metal cover. That goes on the top, this one goes on the bottom. So take our little metal covers off and we'll just undo our new filter. Here is our new filter with a pair of new O-rings. If you're wondering, if you look down in here, there's a little, where are you, camera? I can't see where we're going. There we go. Right, that's where your oil filter bolt on. On here. This little spring thing is a one-way valve and what that do is once oil has got up into your filter it stops the oil draining back into the sump that little spring valve there actually see you see you push it when you push it that lets the oil back down so as the oil gets pushed up here from the oil pump it comes out of this middle up into your filter the oil pressure pushes that little spring open allowing the oil to return back to the sump when you stop, switch the engine off, the oil pressure will stop building. The spring on that little valve holds it closed. So while the car is sitting there not doing nothing, your oil filter stays full of oil. 
it stops for tap up clatter and all that business right there is no o-ring on that filter there and there's that's strange there's no o-ring on that There's no O-ring on this. Let's get you back out. There we go. There's no O-ring on this housing. There's no O-ring on this old filter. Either end. Strange. So where them O-rings go, I'm not too sure. And we want to put him back on there where he sits. Now I think there's been that one of them O-rings, I'm sure I meant to go in the bottom there. Do it fit? Yeah, it does. So I'm putting it in. Yeah, that O-ring does actually fit in the bottom. There weren't one what came out. I'm assuming there's meant to be one. Oh, I say there weren't one in there when I just took it out. But that o ring fits in there perfect, so I'm fitting it. And we're going to assume it was probably just missing. So we've got that one there. Give our canister a wipe out. There we go. Do it matter which way up these filters go? No. Now the same both ends. Plonk the top on. Plonk your new filter in there. That just sits on there. Plonk that over and put on. Oops, hang on. You guys have already noticed, haven't you? You guys already noticed the spring was missing. So now we need our long bolt. Come on. There we go. Right. And again, don't go over the top with these. There we go. We've just give that a nip up. Bearing in mind, there is the um, rubber O-ring in there now, which weren't there before. Why there weren't one in there before and how it was holding oil, I'm not quite sure, but it definitely weren't in there because it hasn't dropped out. It's not fell through to the ground or nothing, so you want to just give that oil filter now a wipe around there. So when we start her up, we can see if there's any oil in there. What a silly idea, putting that breather pipe right next to that oil filler there we go right so i'm going to get a jug and we'll get some oil in all right we have our oil 2050 comma classic oil absolutely perfect for this whole thing i don't know what the filling capacity is but you know that's going to be at least three and a quarter green look now that oil she's green so we're going to put three and a half liters in the old girl so if we fill our jug up don't go too full with your jug or you'll spill it everywhere what well, we got in there? One and a half litres. So if we do this twice, that'll be three litres. If you wonder why I'm not filling this jug fully up, 
because the last thing you want to do is yeah that oil is green let me zoom in there so you can see the color of that bad boy yeah you look at the color of this he's bright green lovely look look like two stroke oil So we've shot one and a half litres in. There's another one and a half litres going in. Let me tell you a funny story. When I was, when I left school, seven, well, 16, at 17 year old, I got a job with a local village mechanic. He was a one band band called Chris and I want to learn about motors because my dad was a my dad's a builder carpenter my granddad worked on the roads for the council so I never had any uh, any teaching as a kid as to how these engines work but I was all self-taught when I was younger to get these old engines what I'd piddle around with go Anyhow, I work for this old boy, Chris, 17 year old, and he said to me, that's Sierra out there, what an oil change. I said, all right, that's an early new motor. I think that Sierra was a, I think that was an 89 f bridge, and this would have been 1992, or 1991, 1991. So this car's about three year old. Doing all change on this Sierra. I always remember that. That was a bloody 1800 Sierra. I, let, I jacked it up and took the sump bung out of the bottom and drained the oil out. Went and had a cup of tea. I let it drain, like he said. Have a cup of tea or do something else. Or did I check the tyre pressure? So I did something else while I was waiting for this oil to drain. Didn't know how much oil I needed in it. Chris, I said, how much oil do I need in this thing? Well, he says, put four litres in and go from there. Well, I got his big old four litre tin, put three litres of oil in that, shot that in the top. Put another litre in, so that gives four litres. Check the stick, nothing on it. I thought, well, this is a rubbing. Well, 12 litres later, I looked down and realised I had wet feet. I hadn't put the bloody sump bung back in. So, there you go. We learn, don't we? That made a mess, and they ripped the piss out of me for ages. So let's check our oil. Where's the damn dipstick hole? There it is. Right. Yeah. With the three litres we'll put in, we're on the minimum. Bear in mind, we have got to fill the filter up as well, because that is still empty. So we'll crank another litre in here because that filter will take a good half a litre and we'll give that a second and then we can start this thing up check for leaks make sure we ain't got any leaks anywhere so yeah always remember put your sump bung back in that's the first and only time I ever did that. All right. Bear in mind this end, this oil ain't settled yet. She's still cold oil, so she's. But we are up to the full mark. Bear in mind that's going to go down once that filter housing's full. Because this filter housing is still empty, if you remember, because I ain't filled up yet. So we want to start this thing up. So we'll just pop, pop the cap back on and we'll give this whole girl a start. Let me move all the plugs and spanners so they don't go falling off. There we go. Now I'm going to start this and I'm going to try and keep the revs as low as possible. And we want to keep a look at we want to keep a look at the oil pressure gauge. 
Let me bring you around this side. <clears throat> Our oil gauge, I'll point to it when I get in the car. That one there. That is our oil pressure gauge. So we want to have a look. And my, ah, you can see, look, looky, looky. So we'll get in this thing and see if we've got any for oil pressure. We should have. Now I briefly warmed this car up before I let the oil out. But I don't want to put a shitload of revs on until we've got oil pressure. So I'm going to check the oil light. Whoops, here's our choke. Come on, baby. There we go, there's our oil pressure. Look. She has gone straight up to 60. We've got 60 pounds of oil pressure. Which is quite good. I think that will now have filled the filter up. Oh, she's taking over with no choker. She's a bit slow, she's only 500 revs, but once she's warmed up, homework, once she's warmed up, it'll be all right. So there. So let's come around here and check for leaks. You know, that little engine sweet as a nut. Considering she's stone cold. Well, I say stone cold. I warmed it up for a couple of minutes before I let the oil out. But for an 1800 BMC, listen to them tappets. She is really quite a little lump, that. I can't see any leaks. No leaks around that oil filter housing. Sweet as a nut, that. So there you go, guys. That is sweet as a nut. Marvels. So what we can do with this old girl now, basically, leave it for 10 minutes to settle, let that oil settle back down, I'll check the level again, and once the level's been checked, she's done, and then we'll be out on road test. But I'm gonna put the road test down as a separate video, so I'm going to end this video here. This is how to do a mini service on your engine and do your rocker gasket and the plugs and stuff. And the next video I'll post up just after will be the first time I have ever driven an MGB. So yes, I don't know what to expect. I know just shunting it around here. It's like you're sitting on the floor. But we'll have a go. Right, I'll be back later. And bye-bye for now. Ha <laughs> ha!